The New York Rangers take game one of their series with the Washington Capitals, and you won't believe who scored the first goal. We've got that and a whole lot more coming up next on the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Everybody to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. It is great to welcome back to the show the host of Locked On New York Rangers, John Chick. And uh, John, you got to be pretty happy with what you saw on the ice in game one from the New York Rangers. Yeah, overall, very encouraging. You know, I think um, if, you, if you're kind of drawing up a blueprint for how the Rangers will win game one, I, I think it would be pretty similar to this. I mean, it wasn't the most lopsided score you'll ever see, but one of those games where it just felt like the Rangers were mostly in control. Uh, obviously, they had that barrage of three goals in just over two minutes in the second period there, and that's tremendously encouraging because one thing that the Rangers had really struggled at this season, and they've been better recently, but they have been, for, for a team as good as they are, with the best record in the NHL, just abysmal in the shift that follows a goal, or maybe not necessarily the following shift, but you know the next minute or two, uh, whatever it might be. So to see them uh, just explode for those three goals there, see the fourth line get involved, uh, it was awesome. I, I feel like it's one of those games where everybody did uh, at least a little bit to help the team win, and I don't think anybody had a bad game on the team, and obviously there's still a long way to go here. That was just game one, but as far as an encouraging uh, game one performance, I think that was it right there. Talk to me about the fourth line. You mentioned they they were involved scoring a couple of goals and and really playing well. Even Matt Rempe getting on the scoreboard with a goal. What made them so effective in game one? You know, they, they just go out there and go to work. I, I think that's that's where it begins. When you watch that first goal that they scored, I mean, I, I was thinking about this when it happened. Like, that's the kind of goal that, like, if a first line scores a goal like that, it's very impressive. You know, they, they zip in there on the rush. Um, they do a great job, you know, keeping the puck away from any kind of defenders, a couple of nice passes, guys under duress, making good passes. And, um, you know, Matt Rempe's there on the doorstep and, uh, he finishes and, you know, Rempe, I mean, he's kind of a lightning rod. We know that, you know, both for, for Ranger fans and fans of other teams who might not like him very much, but, um, he's one of those guys, like, I really don't think he's a one trick pony. Everybody just kind of sees him as the guy that goes out there and fights and he's the goon and this and that he's got better speed than people realize for, for a big player. Um, and he's somebody, he's one of those guys, he can set up shop in front of the net. And if, if he doesn't want to move, I mean, good luck moving Matt Rempe out of there. So I, I honestly think like at, at one time or another in his career, uh, he might get around like 20 points a season. It's not going to be like point per game or anything ridiculous like that. And of course he doesn't have a ton of ice time to work with, and he's going to mostly be on the fourth line, but I don't think that's an unattainable, like kind of milestone for him. And for the other guys, I mean, Jimmy VZ is one of those guys that just busts his tail every single game. And Barkley Goodrow, you got to feel happy for him because he's one of those guys that uh, does come under fire from Ranger fans from time to time. You know, they see his salary. I think it's like $3.6 million, And it's like, oh, he's a fourth liner. He, he never scores and this and that. And it's like, you know, that guy puts his hard hat on every night. And um, nice to see him get rewarded with a, a multi-point game. I'm pretty sure he had two assists uh, in this game, in game one of the playoffs. So just great stuff all around from that fourth line. And again, one of many reasons why I think this is a very encouraging win for the Rangers. What did you see out there in game one that maybe has you a little bit concerned? Um, There wasn't anything too concerning, I wouldn't say. I mean, I thought, you know, physically, the Rangers were right there with them. I haven't checked the stats as far as, like, hits and whatnot. But I, I guess, you know, uh, a couple of the things coming into the series, if there was anything I could look at and, um, you know, kind of point to, and, okay, maybe that, that might be a little bit of uh, an issue. Um, Physicality, although the Rangers' physicality is very underrated. I've been saying that on my show all year. I just think that the Caps, you know, give them credit. You know, they, they battled their way into the playoffs despite being a, a team that sold at the trade deadline, and they're here, and they earned their spot just like everybody else. But I feel like, you know, from an offensive perspective, 
they're not on the same level as the Rangers. So one thing that kind of concerns me is like, at what point are the Caps going to try to like kind of drag the Rangers down into the mud and just make this an absolute slog of a series? I think that's probably their best chance. We'll see if they kind of go with that kind of an approach in game two. Um, and, and the other thing that gave me some worry too was uh, Charlie Lindgren was was hot down the stretch. And I, I felt like he's kind of an underrated goalie in the first place. Um, but to see the Rangers beat him clean a couple of times, that was very encouraging too. You know, the goals that the Rangers were scoring, they they were they were legit. I mean, these were not like lucky bounces or impossible to stop deflections. They, they beat him clean a couple of times and that kind of alleviated you know, some of my concerns. He's still a very good goalie. He made some good saves in this game. He'll make some good saves the rest of the way too. But I think the Rangers uh, can get the puck by him. I, I think they showed that here today. How about uh, Igor Shesterkin, your thoughts on him and how important is his play going to be if the Rangers are going to go on this long playoff run that everybody expects them to do? Yeah, he was good today. I mean, you'll see uh, other games where he'll make a few more highlight real saves than maybe he had in this one, but he did make some tough saves and um, cool and cool under pressure. You know, there, there were a couple of times where after the Caps got one back, you know, they started spending a little more time in the Rangers zone. Uh, they got a power play not too long after that. And Igor was up to the task, you know, making timely saves when you really need them and not letting the Caps back into the game. That was encouraging. And as far as how important he's going to be, I mean, he's going to be huge. I, I always feel like you know, there's some debate on this too, and, and maybe this is a different topic for a different day, Gil, but, um, you know, there, there's some debate about, well, you just need like an average goalie and you play good defense around him. I always think that the goalie really makes a difference. And, um, you know, with Igor Shesterkin, there's a lot of great goalies in this league. If the Rangers are in a playoff series, I don't think I'm ever going to look at the other side of the ice and think that guy's better than Igor, you know? And there, there might be some guys that are evenly matched with him and, you know, we'll see. And again, Charlie Lindgren is no slouch. I really do think he's a good goalie. Um, but, Again, I, that's just an area where I feel like the Rangers are always going to have the edge, and uh, hopefully that's, that makes a big difference as we uh, continue on in the playoffs here. The President's Trophy, as we know, has not been a guarantee of Stanley Cup playoff success. How do you think the Rangers are handling just the pressure that goes along with being number one in the league during the regular season? Yeah, I'm glad you asked me that, man, because, you know, the Rangers, two years ago, they had that improbable run to the conference final, and, and nobody really saw that coming. Even I didn't think they'd make it that far um, going into the season. But I feel like back then, you know, they were such a young team, and so many of these guys in the playoffs for the first time, it felt like they were more comfortable kind of playing the underdog role. And we saw that, you know, they they went down 3-1 to Pittsburgh, came back and won it. They went down 2-0 to the Canes, came back and won it. They got up to nothing to, against the Lightning, and it's like they didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to handle, you know, kind of kind of having that that edge and that advantage. And I feel like lately, you know, especially under Laviolette, they've gotten more comfortable with that idea that, no, we are one of the absolute best teams in this league, and we are the big dog in the yard now. And I, I think that's going to be huge for them. They have to keep that mindset. And, um, you know, again, ton of respect to every team in the playoffs. Um, getting in alone is not an easy thing to do. And as we've seen in the history of the Stanley Cup playoffs, anybody can beat anybody. But, you know, the Rangers, I, I do think they're one of the best teams in this league. The, the record proves that. And if they can um, if they can keep doing what they're doing, I, I think it's looking pretty good. So give me, you know, two or three keys that you think are most important for the Rangers to go on this long playoff run. Well, if the refereeing is going to be anything like it was today, uh, there there were some ticky-tack penalties called in this game. But then later in the game, they, they weren't calling – uh, things that seem kind of obvious that should have been called. And for the record, I'm saying this both ways. I'm not saying like the refs are out to get the Rangers or anything like that. But Rangers have a huge penalty kill. Uh, they, they've done a great job all season. They've been especially good down the stretch. And if it's going to be like this, if there's going to be penalties called every couple of minutes, then uh, that's obviously going to be a huge unit uh, for the Rangers for them to go out there and get it done. And I think just that ability also to to roll four lines, you know, we saw that in this game. Uh, we, we talked about this a minute ago, but... I don't think anybody on the Rangers really had a poor showing in this game. And obviously the fourth line, I mean, they're not going to get two goals every game, but they played very well even outside of that. Um, the Wenberg line, you know, Wenberg, Cooley, Kako, that's the third line. I, th I thought they looked really good in this game too. So um, having that depth is huge. You know, you can't always rely on just one line to get it done. And, um, you know, again, I, I thought every line played well, and, and that's encouraging as well. John, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? Yeah, so wherever you're listening to this or watching this, you can find Locked On Rangers there too. We're on YouTube. Um, we are also on every audio streaming platform that you can possibly think of. And as far as following me on social media, I uh, go on Twitter at jcheck17. Um, and you know, I was pretty active during the game today, and I'll, I'll try to be for the rest of the playoffs as well. All right, John. Thanks so much. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Gil. Good talking some hockey.